there were a few different takeaways from last night's game against Memphis. Just like, once again, just a bunch of the younger guys kind of showing out. Uh, Jovic had another big game. Uh, Jamal Kane had another big game. Jamar Boye played really well. Uh, but then there's also the Duncan Robinson effect, who basically scored 29 points. Uh, I just want to go over a specific element of that. And it's not the fact that he's playing with the guys he's playing with and scoring 29. It's how he was getting those points and kind of the sets that they were spamming because there was two different sets that they were utilizing that were kind of different from some of the stuff we've seen, I guess, over recent time for Duncan Robinson. We're a lot, uh, we're very used to just the the normal DHOs, the normal handoffs, just shooting right off off the screen, uh, and then obviously some stuff off the catch, which he did a lot in this game as well. But there's two separate sets. I just want to show that they kind of spammed in this game that were uh, could be useful, I guess, for him and I guess other shooters on the team in this regular season. First one. It's going to be a lot of stuff at the elbow. It's kind of the first element is just inserting that pass to the elbow to the big. Uh, the point guard just makes that insert pass right here. The next step is Duncan's basically going to be on the other elbow. He could be an option to kind of get that entry pass as well if they want to just run like a, a pick and pop or an inverted uh, action or things of that nature. But they insert the pass. Now Duncan's going to turn and set a down screen right here. What that causes is just chaos overall because – you look at the back side down at that weak side corner, that guy has to tag down low. If that's Bam out of bio with the ball right there, he could throw a skip pass to the opposite corner, and all of a sudden you have a three right there. Uh, but it causes chaos if you look at Duncan screening because that defense better have total communication. They better know what's going on because if they have to be either switching, they have to be fighting through, you have to know what's happening. So Duncan makes this screen right here. They have to, they kind of pause. They don't really get anything out of it, but Duncan uh, doesn't go through the handoff like you kind of expect. He shoots out instead and kind of fakes it out a little bit. And he ends up getting a really deep three and hits it. Uh, really big shot. But just it's more about the process of how he was getting into those looks and kind of reading defenses and not just uh, being predictable, I guess, and just keep going off the handoff over and over. He's just finding little outlets to be different uh, from time to time. This is another one. Gabe just threw the entry pass once again to Orlando Robinson. Uh, this time, instead of setting the screen as they're expecting, the defense is expecting it once again. Uh, this is, once again, if you look at the clock, this is kind of a drawn-up play coming into the half. There's, it's a... 30 seconds into this third quarter, you know this is what they wanted to get to. Uh, as I go back one more time, throws the entry pass. Instead of setting the screen right here, he's going to slip it, come around the handoff. He shoots it. He ends up getting fouled. He doesn't hit it, but he gets fouled. Uh, just really good process on that play. Like, if you want to think about things Miami could run, putting, let's say, a, a Tyler Hero or a shooter type in that opposite corner, you can't help off of that. So you're basically betting on, as a defense, that you're two guys that are screening and being screened are going to have total communication and, and kind of perfect execution. Because if you don't, you're going to be in a spot with Bam passing and, and a shooter on the offside shooting. And then obviously a guy like Duncan coming off that handoff as a threat. So it's just something to look out for, I guess, moving forward. Um, and the second way that they were utilizing him, as I'm going to show right here, is something we've seen a lot of with Max and I guess not as much as, as of Duncan in recent time. But it's just flare screens, something that uh, is just gives him a little bit more room to operate. It's not shoulder to shoulder off a of screen it just gives him more time to catch and shoot and it feels like that's what he's gonna have to do a lot of this season just catch and shoot not think uh don't not having to just run around and, and got to be in that same role he was before this time it's gonna be a little bit different uh but this is why i think it's intriguing because there's stuff like this where you kind of he passes it gives it right back now orlando robinson's gonna set the flare if gabe's you know he was being kind of careful because there's a guy over there obviously on that right wing uh, there wasn't great spacing on this play overall, so he couldn't throw the pass right away. But after he sits on it a little bit, he could still make that pass over the top and Duncan hits it. But you can see kind of how this works and how it can be so effective. If a guy is just shooting off that and you trust your playmakers and passers uh, like a Kyle Lowry to make that pass over the top and get them good looks. Another one, this isn't just uh, I'm showing one example here because this was happening frequently throughout this game. They were spamming a lot of these different actions throughout this game. Once again, Quick pass right back at him. Orlando Robinson screen over the top. He doesn't get it this time. It doesn't end up going into anything. But not only do you see him open right here, you also see him open on the cut. Like if somebody, if Kyle, if that's Kyle not seeing, being able to make that pass, he'll probably end up making the pass right here on Duncan cutting to the basket, which he's done a lot, a lot in this preseason. He's been good at getting paint touches, getting to the basket in different ways. Uh, and then he loops back around. And if that's not there, you can come right back into a handoff. It ends up being a moving screen or something, and he doesn't end up getting it off. But it's just, once again, the process here is just a little bit different. It looks uh, pretty crisp. And now the last thing I'm just going to show is that something I've been talking about for a long time when in, when it comes to Duncan Robinson is the, the one or two dribble pull-up. Like if, if they're going to be guarding you at the three and they're going to be flying out at you, pump fake one dribble pull-up into a mid-range, like that could be so crucial for his game. 
right here we see him because this is a totally different team he's playing with in, in terms of just exhibit tens and two ways. His usage is totally different. He's running high pick and rolls. And, and the, the pick and roll with Jovic has actually been a deadly action for them in the preseason because a lot of the time they're sending two at Duncan and all of a sudden Jovic gets a wide open three or maybe they stay home on Jovic uh, and then Duncan has a little bit of a lane. Right here you see him kind of playing off the big a little bit. He gets, it, it gets into it, stops, pops, little mid-range jumper. That was kind of the most intriguing play of this entire game because if Duncan Robinson's hitting pull-up jumpers like that, which I'm not saying he's going to have the ball in his hands like that at much this season of, of kind of high usage or coming off screens of pick and rolls, but if he was able to add that to mid-range, it changed a lot for his game in general. So uh, that was just some of the intriguing stuff in Duncan Robinson. If they can court, great, I guess, some of these sets that I was showing in the regular season, which I expect because that's kind of what this preseason is for. Uh, I think it could help, I guess, a lot of their their usual offensive sets that we see in the regular season. 